Next up are Brian Smiley Good luck, yeah. and Ewan McCreeth, two Scottish techies with a plan to revolutionise the mobile app. We've got a fantastic product that's, you know, innovative, disruptive, and, you know, yeah, it's very exciting. Whenever we pitched, we've had a 100% hit rate in terms of in pitch versus investment. So I'm, I'm very confident. No shortage of self-belief, but how will they fare in the white heat of the den? Hi, guys. I'm Brian Smiley, founder and CEO of Beezer.com. And I'm Ewan McCraith, Director of Product Innovation. We're here today to offer you the opportunity to invest £125,000 for 4% equity in Bezo.com. I was running an award-winning digital agency in Sydney when I started to hear the same story from Sony and my clients. Brian, we spent a fortune building our app, but nobody's downloading it. The only way to solve this problem was to bypass the app stores. So, what is Beezer? Beezer.com offers the ability to create your own mobile app using a simple and intuitive online tool. Once you've built your app, you can send the app directly to your users using various methods, including SMS, email, and social media. Importantly, completely bypassing the app stores. The largest website builder in the world is forecasting 30,000 paid signups by the end of year one, which equates to 150,000 pounds turnover per month at the end of the first 12 months. Our turnover by the end of 2019 is aiming to be 1.2 million pounds with a net profit of 360,000 pounds. So, the market's huge and the time is right for Beezer. I'm going to hand you over to Ewan now to do a product demo. So here we have a Beezer built app built upon our platform. The app will appear on the user's home screen where they can launch that app. They can access the features that we've built here for Dragon's Den. One of the features being the ability to vote on the pitches. So you could say what you thought of this particular pitch. <laughs> Somebody's interested in investing. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that kind of leads us very nicely on to questions. Mobile apps made easy is the proposition on offer from technology entrepreneurs Brian Smiley and Ewan McCreeth, who are seeking £125,000 in return for a 4% share of their business. Tej Lalvani is keen to find out more about the geezers behind Beezer. Hi, Ewan, Brian. Hi. Um, so, can you tell me a bit about your background sure. and how you guys got into this app and what did you do before? I'm from a technology background, so I graduated from the University of Glasgow in 2003 from computing science, um, and I've been involved with tech businesses for the last 15 years. And I was running a, a, an agency in Sydney in 2008, and nine times out of ten, when we built an app for a customer, they'd come back knocking on our door saying, Brian, this is fantastic, but we just can't get people to download it from the app store. How do we overcome this challenge? I've got quite a few brands, and the world has changed. You can have the best product in the world, but if you can't market it, yep. it's worth nothing. Sure. So if I emailed to my database mm -hmm. the app, yep. if they click on, yep. does that go straight on, onto the front of their phone? Yes, absolutely. Automatically? Home, absolutely, yes. And then they're into my shop? Yes. Yep. It's great for spreading content. But then you can incentivize <laughs> it going viral. Thanks for downloading our app. For every 10 shares, we're now going to give you a chance to win X, or for every share you get, we're going to give you a further discount off that product. Increasing product awareness while boosting sales. A compelling combination for any business-to-business -business product. It's left the Dragons eager to know more about how the company is set up. So who owns the company? So yeah, equity structure, we've got, so I've got 20 shareholders in the business, all smart money investors. I own 32% of the company, so I'm majority shareholder in the business. I went out, uh, raised 800,000 pounds to get the idea going, put 150,000 pounds of my own money into the business. So I've sold my two houses, my Banksy art collection. I put everything into this. And does the company have any money in the bank? Yes, we have just, uh, just under £200,000 in the bank still. And what's your current burn rate of cash? Uh, current burn rate of cash is £30,000. OK, so you will have gone through your cash in the bank within the next um, six, seven months. Yeah, but we're going to be money generating within two weeks, so we've been working on the Wix and Weebly integrations. That's the two channel partners we've signed up with. Mm -hmm. When we turn on the tap, 
We'll have funds coming into the bank from that. By the end of the year, we'll have 900,000 coming in. Who will be your biggest revenue earner of this 900,000 that's going to come in Wix. over the next? Wix.com. Wix. Yes. Just talk through that. Talk, so, what's a Wix website? Wix is Beezer for building websites. It is a platform that empowers non-technical people with the ability to build their own websites. They're trying to promote their own business through a, a, a digital channel. So with a few clicks from the Wix website, you can come onto the Beezer platform and put your website in to then distribute that to amplify reach of your website. Brian and Ewan's ingenious distribution model cuts out the need for a middleman, potentially spelling the end of the App Store. Deborah Meaden wants to delve further into their customer base. Where do you see as your primary market? Who are you going after first? Well, at the moment, we're talking to three major banks, and we're really close to securing deals with two of them. One of them is already using the product in one of their sub-brands. We've had um, some traction in the event space, yeah. so anybody who wants to start up an, an event. I'm assuming that the um, other tech companies will follow suit. Is there anybody else out there that's already doing it? No, they're not packaging it the way we're packaging it. They don't answer the problem. The problem is apps are not making it out of the store. They're sitting there until they die of neglect. But every single day, there are developers all over the world creating these types of products, and they're, they're churning them out at a rate of knots. You're losing the opportunity on big data. What's the strategy? I there? don't understand big data, but you know what? I think it could be the next big thing for Beezer at some point in the future. That's my big concern, because you're missing a massive trick. If you had an action to go and touch the big data, you're starting to ring fence and protect the very thing that you're building. Help us, you know. I, I absolutely, you know. I'm thinking. I, I, I love Be It's our baby. You know, I love Beezer so much, and that you know, if we can create, you know, some real longevity in the business through that big data um, play, then you know, I'm, I'm all for that. The duo's failure to harness all the data flowing through Beezer to analyse customer behaviour has thrown a potential spanner in the works. And Jenny Campbell is confused about why they've come to the den in the first place. What do you need epoxy 125k for? You've got smart money. Yep. But you still need a dragon. I think you guys really? can add, Yeah, I think you guys can add significant Are you looking value. for a particular dragon? I'd like to get an offer from all five of you today, but yeah, look, I think that, um, that there's a couple of dragons here that know that this is their sweet spot. And then what will the dragon do over and above your smart money? Open doors. I know what I can do. I've done it for, for, for my other tech businesses. It's put them in front of the right people. Yep. So I, I'll make you an offer. I'll give you all the money. I want 10%, mm -hmm. and I want to get my money back. I'll go down to five. Mm -hmm. An offer, but in exchange for more of the company than the 4% the duo were originally looking to part with. Will Tej Lalvani be prepared to match or better it? Guys, I think what you've built is very clever. You know, I can help you with all the tech contacts and building your brand in the UK and internationally, and that's what I do day in, day out. So I too will make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all the money for 8%. I really like it, <laughs> it's, you know. And I love that it's disruptive, you know. It, it, at the moment, businesses don't have a choice, you know, and they're forced between, do I have an app or don't I have an app? Instead of thinking, actually, there's a different way of doing this. So I am going to make you an offer, and I'm going to offer you all of the money, and I want 6% of the business. <laughs> OK. Brian and Ewan are remaining poker-faced, despite the escalating bidding war in the den. Will a tech-savvy Peter Jones be next to join the fray? Uh, guys, I think you've done really well. I actually believe that you have got something, so I'm going to make you an offer for all of the money, mm -hmm. but on the basis of the fact that I hold the golden key to unlocking that value for you, I want 15% of the company. Okay. 
I don't know whether to cry or fall down. <laughs> <laughs> Just leaves me. How are you feeling? Good. I'm close to winning a sportsman's bet, so I'm feeling good. All five dragons could make an offer. Hey, that's counting your chickens, so really. It's an easy follow for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got the tech titan saying I'm in. You're very credible and this is clearly working. So why wouldn't I make an offer? But you're going to lose your bet. I personally don't get that excited about it and it's sure. important to be excited about what you're involved in. I'm out. Time to think? Yeah, I, I, any chance we can get out the den? <laughs> um, yeah, I think Please. we're going to go to the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The talk wall. to the wall. Yeah. Brian and Ewan now have four competing offers to consider. But accepting any of them would mean giving away a bigger slice of the business than the 4% that they originally pitched. <sighs> That's a tough one because um, I think this is a one thing you know, opportunity. Well, I've had an offer from four of them, you know. All right, so I've come in here today and I, I do wholeheartedly stand by the valuation we put on the business. And, and I'm pleased and I really thank you for all the really nice comments that you've given us today. No disrespect to the other dragons. Um, there was two dragons we came along here, specifically was keen to work with. And that was Deborah and Peter. Peter, 15% is considerably higher than obviously what we're looking to sell today. Um, I wonder if, if there was a way that we could get you involved in the business and enable you to get your investment back and lower you down to somewhere in the region of 6%. Um, I want to do a deal. And so do I. I would be willing to go down to 10% if I received my investment back. OK. Deborah, would you be willing to move on your equity at all? I pitched a competitive oh, okay. offer. I saw what everybody else was talking yeah. about, and I pitched a competitive offer. I... Yeah, no, I think you did, yeah. Neither Peter Jones nor Deborah Meaden are prepared to bow to Brian's demands. A risky change of strategy will be needed if he's to snare his dragons of choice. If anybody was prepared to accept £125,000 for 5% equity in the business, I would do the deal here today, otherwise I have to walk away, I have to protect my shareholder's position. I'll do the deal for 8%, but drop to 5% if I get my money back. 125 for 5% is where I'm, where I'm at with this. I believe this business is going to be worth £18 million pounds in 12 months' time. I'll do that deal. You do that deal? Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Tej, I'm going to decline your offer. Did ever I reach out to you on that? I came in for two dragons, and you know, I'm not going to defeat that, oh, Tej. Wow. Go, thank you for your offer. Oh, <laughs> you that's fine. Right. The, oh, the basic, you don't want my offer. Yeah. I'm out. Thank you. Brian has summarily rejected offers from both Tuka Suleiman and Tej Lalvani. The entrepreneur has acted in haste, but will Deborah Meaden make him repent at leisure? Oh, that's a shame you did that. Until that point, you were faultless, but actually that was a bit of an impetuous thing. You have got dragons here who are going to have massive yeah, value. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh. Do you know what, Brian? I'm really shocked. You have a potential opportunity with a unicorn here, and the very person that can connect you and, and connect the dots, you've disbanded, and then you've alienated one dragon to my right, and then you go straight to Deborah, which has now alienated me. Yep. On the basis of the way you're handling this, I'm... Um, I'm feeling a little bit strange about it. OK. 
Brian's brinkmanship is in danger of badly backfiring. His chances of securing an investment, once rosy, now hang by the slimmest of threads. I've got to deal with this now. It's just so... Are you, st are you still in, Peter? I am still in, but I'm in at 15%. Yep, yep. Dropping to 10. Yep. OK, so based on the fact that we have two, two dragons here, I'm, I've put in two separate offers and not offered to make a combined offer. Do you know what? I'm going to go with my gut on this. And my gut says... Go with you, Peter. Are you accepting my offer? 100%. Wow. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ryan and Ewan have done it. They leave the den with £125,000 and a dragon with the contacts and expertise to take their business to the next level. <laughs> That was one of my toughest negotiations in the den. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm actually clammy. I'm sweating like crazy. That experience was like a roller coaster. And at one point, yes, I think I had blown it, yes. But uh, you know what? See what it saw for what it was, clawed it back and closed the deal. <laughs>